Well, welcome to Friends of Forced Fisk. I have a friend who is a professional plus size model. Uh, now, before we get into that, um, I want to tell you how I know Tiffany. Tiffany was uh, is a friend um, that I basically kind of grew up with. We had a small town in Oregon. When I moved there, it was like 1,200 people, and it's been grown ever since, but uh, the church itself was small. The kids, we only had like five to 10 kids, maybe more at times. Actually, one family had like five kids. So it was more like 12. That was my family. <laughs> anyway, so we, we, we had a few. Um, and Tiffany was a couple years younger than me and her brothers were a handful. Uh, one of which uh, I think was a year younger than me. And we gave uh, my third grade Sunday school teacher grief, like grief every week. And it was so entertaining, me and uh, written. Uh, but I apologize, Chris, I'm sorry. But besides that, Tiffany was just your average, just fun girl. Uh, nothing crazy, nothing mean, just she did fine in, in life and in school, as far as I know. But she was a couple years younger. We weren't like buds or anything. And I went off to college and we just kind of lost touch. Um, we connect, reconnected on Facebook after that. But by that time, that was like eight years after we had really said anything. So I lost a lot of what was going on in her life. So Tiffany, tell me, what has gone on in your life since we basically last talked? And what in the world? You're a professional plus size model. Tell me all about it. Um, yeah, so I did. I kind of stumbled into modeling, I'll be honest. It wasn't something that I had actively been seeking out to do. Um, growing up, I always had a very theatrical personality. I loved you know, participating in drama and theater. Um, I enjoyed anything creative, um, kind of picked up photography in my early 20s. And uh, when I moved to Omaha in 2011, um, I was kind of going through some rough times in my life and I wasn't really sure um, what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go or if this was my forever place. Um, yeah, because Omaha is just kind of out in the middle of nowhere for middle America. <laughs> I mean, like no family out there. What brought you out there? Yes. So actually, um, I, I'm one of five kids. Obviously, I, I have my four brothers and my parents. And right out of high school, I had moved out to um, northern New Jersey, like right outside of New York City. And um, I was a nanny out there for five years. Oh, wow. And yeah, during that five years that I was out there, my older brother had joined the military and Britain uh, and had gotten stationed at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha, Nebraska. And my parents, still living in Oregon with my three younger brothers, um, went out to visit him and realized that the cost of living is much more affordable in Nebraska than it is in the Pacific Northwest. And um, my mom found her dream house and it ended up going up for sale. And so she and my dad just kind of jumped on faith and um, wow. bought their dream house and moved my three younger brothers out here. So when I was ready to leave New York, my four brothers and my parents were here in Omaha. And wow. so I actually met them here. Um, and my nephew, uh, Britton's son, was just a newborn little baby at that time. And um, now he doesn't live here and my mom doesn't live here. <laughs> just my dad and my two youngest brothers are still here. Um, but I, I ended up um, getting involved in, in modeling here. I ended up going to college, getting my associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree. And then I, I met the love of my life and he's Nebraska born and bred, so I'm here now. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, wow. So you said you just kind of stumbled into it. Um, from what you said earlier to me, it was like somebody asked you basically, would you consider this sort of a thing? Yeah, so I had a, a friend um, who was into fashion design and she was going to present at Omaha Fashion Week 
um, she ended up having to pull out and she couldn't show her collection, but she was still volunteering for the fashion week. Um, and she had a fellow designer who during an open like public model call was complaining that there wasn't enough variety um, or honestly just numbers of plus size models that were being represented. And she was a, a designer who the majority of her um, even though she designs for all sizes, uh, she wanted the, the majority of her models to be plus size. And um, my friend, being a good old friend, said, well, I have a friend who is, you know, beautiful and really theatrical. She's never done runway before, but um, I, I bet you she'd be down to try. And she showed her, she showed the designer a picture of me. <laughs> and the designer told her to call me because the there was an hour and a half left in the open model call. And my, yeah, my friend called me and she's like, can you get here in, in less than an hour? And I was like in my pajamas watching Netflix, you know? <laughs> so I had to hurry up and get ready. Um, and I went down there and they require you to walk the runway in the middle of our busiest mall um, for the public open casting. So. I just kind of went on faith and she told me, my friend told me, she's like, I swear you'll get in. You just have to walk like down to the end and walk back without falling. And so I did. And sure enough, I got cast in my very first show. Wow. And that was really recently. Like that was like three years ago. Oh, really? Okay. Three or four. Yeah. Nice. And have you done like any runway stuff or mostly pictures or what, what have you done? Like what does that look like for you? Yeah, so I I have continued to participate in Omaha Fashion Week. Um, they usually have a spring show and a fall show. Um, my last one that I did was um, in the fall, kind of. <laughs> my dog Indra <laughs> Hello. Uh, was uh, was back in August, I think, and that was socially distanced and. Um, but for, so I've participated probably in, I think, seven different runway shows now. Nice. Um, the second one I did, I got cast by other designers. Um, so that first time I had just been cast by that one designer who knew that I was coming. <laughs> and this is Echo, my other dog. Oh my goodness. Um, but the second time I auditioned, I got cast by other designers. And so I started building relationship with these designers. And there um, was one woman in particular, her name's uh, Hannah Nodskov, and she um, has Hannah Caroline Couture. And she makes custom plus size bridal gowns. And she just kind of adopted me. And she's like, you are exactly what I want nice. for my business. And she's included me in every step of the way. So. I'm on websites for her design catalogs and um, anytime she's done a photo shoot where we collaborate with other local businesses, um, anytime photos get sent in for publication in magazines, she always calls me. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> I didn't really do anything. I just kind of, it, it's very much one of those things where like I was supposed to be involved in this other, you know, I wouldn't have auditioned. Otherwise I wouldn't have done any of this stuff. It was all I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not a, a very religious person, but it was definitely a God thing for me to be in all these places yeah. at the right time to just be handed an opportunity. So uh, I'm guessing that this doesn't really happen in line with what you have your master's degree in. Cause like it was at a left field, right? Right. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. My master's degree is in organizational leadership. So my area of expertise is teaching leaders how to be good leaders and teaching organizations and businesses how to main, like retain their staff and maintain healthy environments in their businesses. Um, I've worked in social work for the last several years, um, you know, homeless services and um, at risk youth and, and things like that and yeah wow. i'm a community response coordinator so i'm a local disaster lady wow. <laughs> and a <plus> -size model <laughs> wow 
Wow. Did those, did those um, topics kind of overlap? You're, you're helping in your social work stuff and your um, organizational, uh, I forgot the name of it, your organizational helpingness. Leadership. Leadership. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Did, does, does those overlap or did you get one because of the other? Or? I, I, I mean, I feel like organizational leadership, you can really translate into air, any area of your life. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Being a plus size model, like you are signing up to be a target. Um, social media is not kind to you. Uh, your own friends and family can be not kind to you. Um, you know, I've had people tell me, you know, people close to me in my life tell me when I was younger, Tiffany, you're so beautiful. You could be a model if you just lost weight. Well, okay. Well, why can't I be a model now then? Um, it's just because they don't, that's not what you see in movies and in magazines and, and things like that. But I feel like the last two years, this, there's been the last few years, there has been this radical movement of self-acceptance and self-love. And I hate to, to think that that's a radical idea, but go on. I mean, but if you think about it, I, I mean, know Lizzo uh, is a pop star who's a very popular example. And she is hated on so hard because she wears outfits that other female pop stars will wear but those pop stars are a size two and she's a size 20. Well, what's the difference? It's the same thing. Why is it bad for her, but okay for them? Um, she sings about how she loves herself and has it going on the same way that any other pop star would, but it's just not accepted. Um, people don't like it. They feel like she should feel more shame. Mm -hmm. And we get that a lot as plus size models. Like you don't look beautiful. You, you know, why would they want you? I've had nasty comments. Um, there was one time where I had an internet troll just like stalk my Facebook inbox telling me how I was disgusting and my body was an abomination and I should feel terrible about myself. And how could I sleep at night when I'm so unhealthy and I'm so disgusting and and i'm putting pictures out there for children to see that um is glorifying obesity and disease i'm a very healthy person i just happen to have bad genetics and you know some some other things and it you know it is what it is um people just don't like fat people liking themselves <laughs> Wow, that's sad. Uh, well, even for me, I I try to use other words when I'm like, and well, or Oliver, my kids, you got to eat your vegetables. Like you got to eat your veggies and your fruit because you can't just eat junk. You'll be mm, unhealthy. <laughs> Trying not to use just, you know, a blanket word, which doesn't mean health. Mm -hmm. but it slips out sometimes and they're almost synonymous um so yeah like even when I'm trying really hard like it it is ingrained in our culture it's it's very difficult and and I think there's a uh, an association with with health and, and fat and I like, I'm very comfortable saying I'm, I'm a fat person to me. Fat is not a bad word. Um, everyone has fat on their bodies. Some of us just have more than others. Um, I eat very healthy. I'm a very picky eater. I like my fruits and my vegetables. I, and my lean meats and fish. I, I'm not a junk food person. My husband played track and basketball. He is an athlete. He eats the worst I have ever seen. All he wants is fast food and candy and garbage. And this man stays small and fit without working out and eating like a trash can. He's got high, you know, he's got the high cholesterol and I, you know, my blood pressure is perfect. <laughs> it, there's, it doesn't, they're not synonymous. Right. Um, you know, just like you could say, you know, we, 
most of us have hair. Some hair is short, some hair is long. Some people have more hair than other people. Some people have more fat than other people. Right. Uh, it is what it is. What would you tell somebody that uh, probably got the wrong end of the genetic stick? For this time and place, <laughs> for yeah. our culture. Um, I, I firmly believe that hating yourself is a waste of time. Um, the body that I have right now, I'm at the heaviest I've ever been. Like I, I've been through some things that have caused me to, you know, gain some weight. And, uh, you know, the pandemic, I think, has, has done a little bit to everybody. Um, but the body that I have right now has survived my worst days, my darkest moments. It has been there at every amazing moment of my life. Like this body has been through it all. It's been around the world. It has, you know, just there for me every step of the way. Why would I hate that? It's kept me breathing. It's kept me alive. Yeah. So what if I have stretch marks or if I have acne or if I feel bloated today or don't like what I see when I look in the mirror, like cars get mileage racked up on them. They don't stay looking like a new car forever. Um, you know, this is just my vessel and I'm going to, we should all just love the skin that we're in. Yeah. It doesn't mean don't don't try and improve yourself. Like if you want to be more healthful, if you want to be more fit, if you want to increase your muscle tone and increase your fat per or decrease your fat percentage, like go for it, go for it, go crazy. Um, whatever helps you feel the best, mm -hmm. but that's just, that has nothing to do with who you are. Yeah. If that well, makes sense. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much. I think that's, that's awesome. Okay, so I saw some tattoos. Can you show me some of your artwork here? Yes, okay. So this is my sleeve. Whoa. This is, it's all Doctor Who. Oh, really? No way. Yeah, so this is the 10th Doctor, David Tennant. It's kind of hard. <laughs> no, I see it, I see it. And then the TARDIS. Yeah. And then this is Rose Tyler wow. in a wolf's head dress with the yellow eyes. Um, right here, I have uh, Donna Noble with nice. Ted Silhouette and then the TARDIS behind it. And then you got a little beetle up here. Um, River Song Sonic Screwdriver. Nice. And then um, an exploding Gallifrey and Pocket Watch nice. with some Gallifrey. And, yeah. Dude, that's really cool. That's my nerdy arm. That's I'm very awesome. proud of it. That is cool. I I don't want to pay for another streaming service, so I haven't watched the latest Female Doctor yet, but I would really like to sometime. So I'll get on it's that. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, if you want to talk about other stuff, that's fine. But I, that that was a great little interview. Um, do you have anything in particular that you wanted to to talk about? Well, the only thing I was thinking of is um, for girls, especially who've been through trauma, especially brought about by other people, um, to hear other people going through it and that you got through it is kind of helpful. But if you don't want to, or I don't know if it's just going to be. A, I'm totally um, comfortable with it. Yeah, I'm very comfortable with it. Sure. Um, I feel like it's really important to talk about because it happens to so many people. It happens to the vast majority of people, um, but no one wants to talk about it. So um, you went through some trauma yourself. So what kind of what kind of trauma are, are we talking about here? Sure. So um, on St. Patrick's Day of two thousand thirteen. I think um, I was sexually assaulted by a friend of mine um, you know I was in my mid-20s I was hanging out with a group of male friends that I had known for quite some time um, 
I always felt very comfortable with having male friends because I have four brothers. So all I know is being surrounded by that masculine energy and I didn't think anything of it. Um, one of the guys um, kind of had a crush on me and we had flirted in the past and, and some things that happened, but we were just friends and um, we got a designated driver for the night and um, we were at a bar and I asked him if he would buy me a shot and, you know, he made some inappropriate comments, but bought me a shot and I took it. And then later that night he said, well, I bought you this drink. So now you have to give me this. And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You want the six bucks for a stupid shot? Like, I'll give you the six bucks. Like, I don't owe you anything. Right. Um, and he decided that if I wasn't going to give him what he wanted, then he was going to take what he wanted. Um, there, there was a a group of us in the room. So there were two other men that were present and one of them just walked out seeing what happened. And uh, another one thought that it was going to be like a fun group thing. But, at, you know, at this point I'm like screaming and, you know, trying to remove myself from the situation. Um, and yeah, he just, um, at, at one point he strangled me and I passed out and it was that strangulation and, and me losing my vision and consciousness that ended up resulting in like a lifetime worth of health issues that I still have to deal with today. What? Really? Mm-hmm. What? Well, uh, well, how? I don't so, know. Um, I developed fibromyalgia a few months after the assault. Um, our, my doctors explained that a lot of women in their late 20s um, or early 30s develop fibromyalgia and the majority of them is triggered by trauma. So at like one point in time, my brain switched off and I remember this exact moment, my brain switched off and told my body it wasn't in pain anymore. And that was a lie. But, you know, like it's your body's fail safe. Your brain protects the rest of the body or protects itself um, by like shutting down the rest of the body. Wow. And so because my brain was telling my body that it wasn't in pain when it was, now my body tells or my brain tells my body that I'm in pain when I'm not. So I have a, a chronic pain issue where I'm in, in pain every single day, physical aching pain um, every day for the rest of my life. And I have chronic migraines from- Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I had no idea that that could have been connected. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I, I try to be really open about it because when it happened to me, I, I felt very alone. I knew statistically, you know, I'm, I'm a smart girl, like in the books, I know this happens and I know that people know it happens and, um, I, I should have support. Um, I did press charges, which is very um, rare. And it was the hardest thing I ever had to do was mm -hmm. take him to court. Um, our justice system is set up for people to, to, to prove that the innocent aren't liars and not that the guilty is guilty. So they asked me questions, like with, I got put on the stand and they asked me questions about my sex life, about the time of day, about, you know, exact, like the exact time, you know, was it 7.15? Was it 7.30? Do you, you know, what street were you on? I don't know. That was the most traumatic day of my life. How am I, you know, I still have a, like, I have a hard time remembering what the year is even. There are certain things that are, um, 
that make your brain fuzzy about it. Um, but uh, I remember when I went home and I had bruises all over my body the next day and I, and I, my sister-in-law asked me, what happened to you? And I said, this guy wanted sex and I told him no, so he beat the hell out of me. And my siblings were there, my parents were there and it just got quiet and no one said a word until my sister-in-law finally said, well, that sucks. And that was the end of, that was it. That was the last thing that was said. Um, and I don't, like, I don't blame them for that moment. Um, Hard to know what to say, yeah. Right, when someone you love comes in, like you see on TV, like people go into instant rage and protective mode. But when that actually happens to you, there's this shock that sits in. And so for me, yeah. it took me six days to report the incident because to me, my family who is so close and so fierce and so, you know, um, caring for one another was suddenly so stiff, and silent. And, and to me, it made me feel like, am I being too dramatic? Did what just happened to me, is it not as bad? Because if it was as bad as I feel like it's bad, they would be upset, right? Yeah. But I also don't know what I would do if my best friend or if my child or, um, you know, someone walked into the room covered in bruises and said that. It takes the wind out of you. Yeah. So it, it's, it's not how it is in the movies. <laughs> it doesn't go like that. Wow. Um, but, uh, and then I was also diagnosed with uh, PTSD as a result mm -hmm. of the incident as well. So that PTSD uh, manifests differently in every person, but I have um, certain habits of avoiding certain areas of town. Um, there are triggers that can make you um, sometimes like I have been like thrown back into memories before where I couldn't tell if I was th there or here um because I could kind of see them at the same time and that's very very scary mm -hmm. um so for me one of the things that like a trigger for me is uh, St. Patrick's Day decorations mm -hmm. because it happened on St. Patrick's Day so you know when I when I think about it, all I see are shamrocks and white and green and pots of gold. And, and I could walk into a store in February looking for Valentine's Day chocolates and accidentally turn and walk into an aisle where they put up the St. Patrick's Day stuff and it just is like a stab in the gut. And then my brain runs a mile a minute and it's like, I have to get out of there. Otherwise, like my whole body starts to shake and I can't. And it's like, oh, for a t-shirt? Really? Like, that's what, that's what does, that's what you're, you know, that's how you respond. Um, but you, you really just don't have any control over, over it. Right. Wow. Wow. What advice would you give to somebody that's been through that? Maybe that didn't take the steps that you did, or just needs to hear from somebody that went through it. There there is no right way to heal. Um, if you didn't press charges, if you have never told a soul, that's okay. You don't have to. Um, we, are, we are not the same person. I chose differently. That doesn't mean it's better or worse. It was just different. But healing is the most important thing. And I remember kept keeping thinking that like I had to heal gracefully. I had to come out of this with composure. I had to work through it with holding myself together. And, and that is a lie. That is a total, total lie. Mm. You don't get over something, you get through it. And when you get through it, you're gonna cry, you're gonna cry, you're gonna scream, you're gonna fall apart, it's gonna be ugly, but you get put back together again. Um, 
I, I equate it to the gym. <laughs> I know it's a terrible metaphor, but you don't go to the gym and, you know, work out with weights and then get mad at the weights for making your muscles sore. You know, if you go to therapy, it's going to hurt, but in the end, you're going to get the results that you want. Oh. And so I just encourage, encourage, encourage you to find the supports because they're there. Mm. Awesome. Wow. Well, thank you. Yeah. I think that that's also very helpful and it's going to help somebody. I know quite a few of my friends that have gone through trauma in different ways. And just to know that there's other people out there that they can sympathize with is really awesome. So I appreciate it. This is my emotional support dog. <laughs> if you can't tell, I start talking about the tough stuff and she comes up to give me kisses. Oh, really? That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Tiffany. Yeah, no problem. And if you ever have any more questions or want me to elaborate or clarify anything, just let me know. I know I'm chatty. And especially when we start talking about like heavier topics, I, I know that emotions get into play and I can get flighty oh. and not always sound composed. So yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Like you're the second person I've interviewed. So it's not like I know what I'm doing quite yet. So <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Tiffany. We'll see you yeah, later. No Hi, everybody. Thank you for watching our interview. As an epilogue to this, this is the first St. Patrick's Day since her trauma um, and sexual assault that Tiffany was able to go to work and not have to go home or stay home because of her PTSD um, and trauma response um, during this time of year. So as a blessing to you all for watching my video, I'm wearing my wife's... <laughs> very tight to me shirt which is saint patty's day themed and it is a blessing that says may your blessings outnumber the shamrocks that grow and may trouble avoid you wherever you go thanks and peace <laughs>